equity in En-ROADS. And this is to complement the other parts of this module on multi-solving. The most important thing you can do to make sure that you bring equity into the conversations in En-ROADS is to frame it as the purpose of the session. When you talk about the workshop or the game, why are we here? What are we trying to make happen on Earth? What you're trying to do is address the climate and climate-related equity or justice. Include the two. It has dual goals. That's why you're here. Look to all the materials on multi-solving from Dr. Beth Sawin and team. But in particular, there are two framings that are really, really helpful as you engage people with En-ROADS. And the most practical thing to do is when someone proposes a slider and says, oh, I want to look at energy efficiency, I want to look at deforestation or coal, ask two questions. Number one, what are the co-benefits that you would like to capture if you did that. Co-benefits, these are things related to jobs, health, community health, resilience, economics, the environment, other environmental issues. These sorts of things that are around in the framework of multi-solving, the flower, all of these other co-benefits, which you don't necessarily get by moving the slider. Policy design, will help you make sure, for example, that if there is less coal, that it actually does improve air quality for people. All right, number one, how to capture the, the co-benefits. Number two, what are equity considerations here? We're about to promote renewable energy. We're about to promote carbon removal or a carbon tax. What are the equity considerations? How do we Make sure that marginalized communities aren't hit, hurt by the implementation of these policies that we're about to enact. Ask those two questions. When you think about it, you can also look here in the simulator. Let's go look at the simulator and see some of the resources for learning about that. Under every advanced area, there's an I button. And if you scroll down, one can read potential co-benefits of encouraging this policy or equity considerations. Two or three prompts for you so that you can learn about the issue in a really condensed form. Go look at the prompts. It's helpful to understand some of these issues before you ask people for their answers. The other is to do actual tests within the simulator. And there are several that we particularly like. One of them is to focus on health and air quality. Air quality is captured down here. It impacts air pollution from energy. And this is PM 2.5. This is the soot particles that come from burning primarily coal. In fact, you can see the sources here. In 2021, most all of it is coal, a little is oil, a little is bioenergy. This is where it's coming from. So when you put in policies, you can show people, first have them imagine what would happen to air quality if we said had a carbon price or an energy efficiency and other policies that keep coal, particularly coal, in the ground. Show people how much better it could be and how soon because many of these co-benefits improve immediately, not out in the 2040s and in the 2050s. Show them air quality. Secondly, think about the household energy cost implications of policies. Here's the cost of energy. If we have a carbon price, those costs could go up. How do we make sure people are okay if the energy costs go up? Because uh, in marginalized communities, a larger percentage of household income goes to energy. That is filling up the gas tank, paying the electricity or gas bill. Uh, one can also consider, well, one way to address this is that there is revenue that comes from a carbon price. Maybe this can be dividended to people, that $3.5 trillion that's raised. We don't just need to assume that energy costs go up. There are also policies that bring it down 
when we use lower ener uh, cheap energy, such as renewables, we find that overall energy costs go down. So these are things that can help equity, help people meet their needs better over time. A third one is to think about forests, people in forests. And in particular, if there's a large amount of land used for carbon removal, who would be affected by that? Going down here to um, land for growing CO2 biomass, we can also look at carbon removal, net carbon removal. And in a world where we have a lot of carbon removal and a lot of afforestation, we could dedicate a lot of land for growing trees. This is the area of India. This shows how much land would be required around the world if we had significant afforestation, but also bioenergy with carbon capture and storage and biochar. There could be a lot of land required. Who lives on this land? How would food prices be affected if land went to growing trees instead of growing food? Whom would be affected by this? And, uh, what are the equity considerations? All right. So the main thing is frame this issue around both climate and climate related equity. And know that there are tips in the model that you can use information here, particularly around capturing co-benefits and equity considerations and particularly air quality, household energy costs, and what we do with land and the implications of land use. Hope this is helpful if you try to integrate equity into your use with En-ROADS. Go get them.